from Robert Estrin at livingpianos.com with viewer questions and answers. The first one is from Naraj. Mr. Estrin, I've really enjoyed your video about sight reading. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to improve. I honestly relate to your story you gave in the video. My sight reading is basically non-existent compared with my level of playing and it's starting to hurt me now. I practice close to three hours a day and devote one hour to sight reading. Very basic pieces. Will this help? Is there a more effective way? Boy, this is a great question. And as I related in my past video about sight reading, I was a very, very poor sight reader. Even as I developed into a pretty formidable repertoire, my reading level was, was almost non-existent like yours because I just didn't do enough. I applaud you for incorporating sight reading into your daily practice. That's a good start. Now, let me just mention, first of all, when you're sight reading, Choose music that you can read accurately at at least a slow tempo after playing two or three times. Because if you choose something that's going to take you five, six, 10, 12 times before you get it, you've essentially practiced your mistakes. It's very difficult to play something right after you've played it wrong a dozen times or something like that. If you choose music on your level and do it every day, the level will grow. Another point is, Always keep your eyes on the music. It may feel unnatural at first, just like the first time you ride a, a two-wheel bicycle without training wheels, part of my story in my video. But it's the only way to read, is to keep your eyes on the music. You simply can't read what you're not looking at. But the real key for developing your sight reading, which is what did it for me and countless other people, is to play with other musicians. Yes, it's an absolute fact that when you're playing by yourself, no matter how disciplined you may be, it's almost impossible to keep going when things don't go right. You'll naturally want to correct wrong notes, but when you're playing with other musicians, the show must go on. You've got to keep moving, which is the very secret of sight reading. Ultimately, sight reading comes down to seeing the basic structure, almost like you're looking at the skeleton of the score and fleshing out what it's supposed to be. Because in a complex piece of music, you can't necessarily see absolutely everything, but you want to see the important things and be able to surmise what the music is, which is one of the reasons that you're going to find, for example, if you read a lot of Mozart, you can be pretty good at reading Mozart, but then if you've never read Schumann or Brahms, you won't be as adept at it. But you get to know these composers and you get to surmise the way they think and the way they write. So playing with other musicians, you will find that even if you're missing a lot of notes, if you can stay with them and be sensitive to their musical expressiveness and their dynamics and their timing, they will be very appreciative of your efforts and you will grow in your reading. So that's my recommendation for you. All right, we have another question here. This one from Carol. How often do you recommend regulating and voicing a Yamaha Studio Upright? It was built in 1986, 40, inch, 40 inches tall. Well, Carol, there's so much into this question. There isn't a one-size-fits-all because of two factors. Number one, how much the piano is played. And number two, the level you are after. Now, another thing is that even a brand new piano is not necessarily optimally regulated and voiced because they come from the factory at a certain level. Some dealers prep them more than others. There is no absolute. It's not like a perfect piano. So the instrument, if you had a certain level that it was at at one point, you want to bring it back to that level, it could take a certain amount of work. If you want to try to go further with it, that's also a possibility. Generally speaking, the finer the piano, the further you can go with regulation and voicing because there's more stability in finer instruments. Therefore, if you stay on top of it, you can reach closer and closer to a theoretical perfection. Work closely with your tuner. You should have a trusted tuner who can advise you as to what results you can find. And like anything else, the more work you do, you will come to a point of diminishing returns, which is to say, at first you might get phenomenally greater results, and eventually the hours spent will give less and less effect to the performance of your piano. Great questions, thanks for bringing them in, and I'll see you next time, Robert Estrin at livingpianos.com.